Okay, so it's my pleasure and honor now to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Maria Chiara Di Gregory from the University of Rome. Maria is here, actually you don't know it, but you are representing <laughs> the continual research insights that Leslie is sharing with the young researchers. So Ma Maria received her PhD in uh, chemical sciences in the Sapienza University in Rome in Italy. And her PhD, your PhD, dealt with self-assembly characterization and applications of bile salts. We heard this name from Leah. And, and then you joined the Weizmann Institute as a postdoctorate fellow in the group of Professor Milko Eric van der Boom, who is here in the audience with us. And you are now a faculty member at the Department of Chemistry in Sapienza University. And you are going to talk with us about a very special name, Mary Mary, quite contrary. How does your crystals grow? Very funny. <laughs> thank you. So thank you for the introduction. I'm really glad and honored to be here to celebrate Leslie. Um, I decided to start my talk uh, with this uh, uh, work of art. Uh, when uh, I heard that the birthday of uh, Leslie was approaching, I decided, although I couldn't come here in Israel in person, to send him a memory of uh, our log uh, talks and discussion. Our discussion focused not just on science, but also on art and Italian artists. So I decided to send him a, a copy of the School of Athens of Raphael. This is a fresco in, uh, that is located in the Vatican Palace in Rome. Raffaello here uh, wanted to uh, report all the great philosopher that was contributed to the knowledge. They are philosophers that were working in all the discipline, humanistic one and scientific one, in order to say that all the discipline co-works together to reach the truth. How to reach the truth? Raffaello uh, seems to give the answer at the core of his painting. So here we can say, we can see Platoon that point his finger up to say the truth is in the idea, is in the, in the abstraction, is in the imagination. But then you can see that close there is uh, Aristotle that say the truth is here in the matter. So the brain and the hand co-work together. So now why to gift a, a work of art to a great science, scientist as Leslie. Because as Einstein was uh, said, the greatest scientists are artists as well. I really think that art and science, and this is really clear in Leslie, has, have the same driving force, that is the love for the beauty. Leslie, uh, told many times that what he pushed him to enter in the science was the, the, because he was amazed by the beauty of the pattern of molecule. And then also I was impressed by another um, story that is used to say that he was inspired by a book that tells about white ant. So these small creatures that are able to build a stable and magnificent structure. So this is really what is special in Leslie, that he likes the beauty, whatever it is. And uh, he fell in love with this beautiful material, crystals. Crystals are all around us. They are the enable life. They are the scaffold of the earth. They are the scaffold of the living system. Uh, they participate in the physiology. Uh, they uh, unfortunately uh, provoke disease. 
but they also can be the cure. So crystals are drugs as well. Um, when I started my journey uh, 10 years ago as a young scientist in the, in the world of crystal, I was truly inspired by the work of Leslie and co-workers that covered really many, many fields. I was inspired uh, especially by the work on biomineralization and the uh, work about shaping the crystal. Because I took with me two messages, that nature has an extraordinary capability of crystallization and we should learn from nature. But then I also learned that human beings are extraordinary capability. So, and uh, the knowledge uh, can really uh, uh, help uh, scientists to manipulate the matter. So, along with Professor Mirko van der Boom, Mikhail Ab, Linda Shimon, that is a scientific daughter of Leslie, and of course, the priceless discussion with the Leslie and Mayer, I started to work with this class of material, meta-organic framework. Meta-organic framework, or MOF, are materials that are formed by the self-assembly of organic molecules and metal ions through coordination bond. The self-assembly leads to the formation of a three-dimensional network, which is ordered, crystalline. The main feature of MOF is porosity. And to summarize a large literature, we can say that most of the effort in the field till now has been focused on the crystal structure, how to generate molecular packing that are more and more porous, and use them for application as material storage and catalysis. But what about, over, uh, what about the control over size and morphology? Usually when you grow moth without additives, without surfactant, without capping agent, the moth looks like this, so they are not so homogeneous in size and shape. In contrast to this general trend, we developed a very easy approach that allow us to control the homogeneity of this crystal without using any ad additives. We use just the basic building block. What we do is to prepare the stock solution of the organic molecule and the metal salt and to mix them in a vessel. After that, we close the vessel, we put it in the oven, and after several days, we observe the formation of a precipitate. This is our moth. What are the building blocks that we use to build this crystal? As a concern, the organic molecule, we synthesize this, this class of ligand. As you can see, they are tetrapodal molecule. And each arm terminates with a pyridine units that is responsible for the coordination with the metal. We could see that by varying this molecular structure at the core, or here by changing the bond order, we could affect the self-assembly process. As I concerned the metal salts, we saw that we could affect the assembly process by changing both the typology of cation and anion. By changing one by one these parameters related just to the building block, we managed to generate a wide array of morphologies, ranging from simple polyhedral crystal structure to more complex polyhedral crystal structure, but that can still can be described with conventional rules of crystallography, up to reach to very weird shapes, I would say almost artistic crystals. So, we also saw that we can have uh, some sort of control over the monodispersity of the size of this crystal. For example, here reported the case of a nanomorph with uh, an hexagonal profile. Please notice how homogeneous are these crystals and how much quantitative is our reaction. What we put in our sample, it all reacts without formation of subproduct. But now I want to make the game even a bit more difficult. I want to show you that keeping constant the building blocks, we can 
change the, self, the assembly process um, just by performing a trivial solvent pretreatment. What does that mean? In a conventional synthesis, what we do is to solubilize the ligand and to solubilize the metal and then mix the two solutions, put it in the oven for two days, and this is what we obtain. Nice prismatic structure with an hexagonal base. What happens now if I use exactly the same building blocks, exactly in the same amount, exactly everything, but before dissolving the ligand in the solution of DMF and chloroform, I go to sonicate this solution alone, and then I carry on exactly as before. This slight variation in the uh, procedure uh, leads us to completely different structure. And as you can see, this structure doesn't look like the conventional crystal with straight facet and sharp edges. But they have round profiles, as for example we observe in biominerals. And then you see the morphology is quite complex. It looks that we have six protonding units, and then it looks that the material is hollow. Indeed, it is hollow, and we proved this by microcomputer tomography, and also we want to cut this material, and we clearly show cavity at each section, and we saw that the cavity, the diameter of the cavity decreased uh, moving from the termini to the center. Till now, I spoke about morphology, but what about crystal structure? The crystal structure doesn't change in this crystal, so this is a true shaping process. So in somehow, I felt that really my, my work was uh, close and really inspired by the work of Leslie and Mayer on shaping crystal and getting paradoxical crystal that are really similar to uh, the, the one that we observe in biominerals. Now I want to uh, introduce a further concept that was also a, um, in which uh, Leslie and uh, Mayer were pioneers, that is chirality. I will show you that starting from a chiral building block, we can introduce chirality in our crystal, both at the morphological level and crystal structure level. What we do is our conventional synthesis in which we use just the basic building blocks. We put it in, in, in the oven for two days, and after that, we leave this precipitate to age for two days at room temperature. After this simple procedure, this is what we observe. So the crystal are very complex and very beautiful again. Uh, it, each structure looks formed by two subunits, and each subunit has exactly the appearance of a flower. This morphology is chiral. We broke the symmetry. Why? These two subunits are not symmetric, they are twist. And we prove this by microcomputer tomography. Here you can see the full volume reconstruction. Here we highlighted just the region with the highest density. And if you focus your attention here, you can see the twist. And uh, in the same sample, we could observe both an antiomeric the form in, uh, in the morphology. How this crystal form? This crystal form mainly in the second part, so at when the sample is left to age at room temperature. When I stop the solvothermal reaction, this is what it's in the sample, just simple globular structure. After 11 hours, we can clearly see an hexagonal profile, and after two days, the flowers are well formed. How is it possible to switch from this, uh, 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 this uh, geometrical morphology to this very complex shape. We observe that starting from the uh, hexagonal base, more layer grow on top and goes to define the petal area. And again, this uh, grow is chiral. 
we have petals that can grow in the clockwise and the anti-clockwise way. So here we have a system that exhibits chirality at a morphological level, even though we have a chiral building block. And this is not common at all. It's something that we observe in the nature. And when scientists see chirality appear, appearing from high chirality, they're always very enthusiastic because this system can tell us um, lesson even before the specific material. So now looking at, uh, till now we spoke about morphology. What about crystal structure? Looking at this crystal in which you can clearly see from a morphological point of view subdomains, you would say, no way that this is a single crystal. This is a polycrystalline material. No. Another big surprise. This is a perfect single crystal, and uh, this is a, a typical diffraction pattern of this material. And also, I reported the uh, tree projection of the Edward sphere down the three main axes. We could index this pattern with a single domain without indication of uh, twinning of multiplicity. With, uh, Linda solved the crystal structure, and we could clearly see that this is a MOF, so the material is completely holded by the coordination chemistry. We have the metal that coordinates four pyridines, and each pyridine belongs to four different molecules. The material is porous, we have two kinds of channels, one with hexagonal profile and another one with trigonal profile. And then another big surprise, the space group. The space group is P622 and is one of the most rare space group. Before our studies, there were just seven entries in the Cambridge database. I don't know how many times Leslie asked me, why P622? Leslie, after maybe seven years, still my answer is, I don't know. <laughs> um, this is a really uh, fascinated crystal structure that uh, Leslie helped us to interpret. The Linda worked a lot on these uh, crystals. And this space group is an achiral space group, but is one of those achiral space group in which we can find chiral pattern. Indeed, if we go to analyze the region around the channel, we can clearly see helicoidal motif. And if we focus on the uh, motif that build the inner wall of the hexagonal and trigonal channel are, are these. We can see that these motifs are homochiral. So if uh, I'm a probe and this probe can enter within this crystal, it will fill an homochiral environment. So with this, I would like to conclude and I would like to convey to Leslie my wishes, but the wishes of all the group, of all the alumni, you were really, you are for us a reference and a shining example. Uh, if someone come to you and to discuss to you, the other part of the group will ask what Leslie said, because your knowledge, your information are really precious for us. Um, coming back to the initial part of the talk, in which we had Platoon and Aristotle, and that tell us that the brain and the head of scientists co-work together. I want to say that the great scientist, as Leslie is, use ants not, not just to run experiment, but to offer the result of the work to the community, to the society, to the humanities. Uh, scientists are those people that bridge the gap, that connect distant point, that help young generation to grow up. Thank you, Leslie, because you did and you do all of this. I feel really honored and lucky 
to meet you in my human and scientific path. Mazal Tov, Leslie. As, as we say in Italian, tantissimi auguri di buon compleanno.